Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Proxmox. I have used Proxmox in a number of my previous lab series and it's it's a perfect tool. It's free, it's easy to install and you can pretty much install it anywhere. Today I want to do a walkthrough. I'm going to show you how you can get Proxmox installed and we're going to walk through 10 or maybe 11 things that I do right after installing Proxmox. Before we go and talk about all the things that I do with the Proxmox, let's review how you actually get Proxmox installed. So all you need is a USB drive. You're going to come to Proxmox.com, you're going to click on downloads and you're going to download the latest version of the Proxmox ISO. Then you're going to come over to Rufus, you're going to scroll down and you're going to download the latest version of this tool. Once you have them both downloaded, you want to get your USB drive and you want to slot it into your computer. Once you've done that, you're going to come back here and you're going to open up Rufus. This is the tool you just downloaded. In here, you're going to see the USB drive that you have inserted should show up under the device. If it doesn't show there, just hit the drop down and select the one you want. You're going to go into this select button and you're going to select the ISO. So just select that, hit open. Once you've done that, just click OK and click on start. That will run through the process and in the end, you will have a bootable USB drive to install Proxmox. So take the USB drive and put it into the computer where you want to install Proxmox. Once you've done that, press the, either the F2, F8 or F12 key. One of those will get you into the boot menu for that computer. Once you do that, then scroll down and just select the USB drive that you've just inserted. That will boot up into the Proxmox install. One of the first things it's going to ask you to select is the type of install that you want to do. So you want to do the PVE graphical install. Then it's eventually going to take you to another screen where you're going to hit agree. The next screen is going to ask you where you want to install Proxmox. So select the disk that you want, click on options. Then it's going to ask you the type of file system that you want to choose. I always choose XFS, it seems to be the most reliable. So select that and click OK, then you can click next. Complete your country, time zone and keyboard layout. Then put in a password, your email address. Then you want to configure the host name and the static IP address that you want for this server. Then all you have to do is click next and that's going to go through the process to install Proxmox and eventually it will reboot. Once it reboots, it will bring you to a login page and that is pretty much it. Okay, so the hard work is done now. Proxmox is installed, which is really good. What you have to do now is you need to open up the web browser and you're going to browse to the IP address that you set for your Proxmox install and you're going to do that on port 8006. So whenever you get to that and the first time you've opened it, you're going to get this message that says warning, just hit advanced and then just go to accept the risk and just proceed to the login page. Log in using the credentials that you set up during the install. First thing you'll notice when you log in is you do get this no valid subscription error message. Now there are different ways that you can get rid of this message. It depends on the version. But the problem with this is that every time you do an update, that message is going to reappear. So it's up to you. You can just live with it and click OK every time you log in or you can run through this fix and then just remember to do that again every time you do an update. To get rid of the error message, we're going to first SSH to the server. Let's clear the screen. You need to go to this location. So it's user, it's share, it is JavaScript, Proxmox widget toolkit. So let's look in there. The tool you want to edit is this file here, this Proxmox lib.js. Before we do that, let's make a backup of that file. Proxmox lib bkup.js. Okay, let's double check that that worked. Okay, perfect. So let's nano into the Proxmox lib.js file. In here, you wanna make a change. So you wanna go control F, that's gonna open up the find option. You're gonna type in no valid. That is gonna search down through this document and you're gonna get this. You're gonna see this function here. What this basically does is, this is telling Proxmox to say, if you don't have a valid subscription, then show me that error message. So what we need to do is we need to comment out the part that says, show me the error message so it doesn't show up anymore. So just scroll down. The bit you wanna comment out, that will start here. So if you follow exactly what I'm doing, you're gonna comment that out. Keep going down. You wanna come over to the very end. You're gonna hit enter. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna type in O-R-I-G, C-M-D. You're gonna do some brackets. So let's press control and X. You're gonna hit Y to save, enter. Okay, so that should be the error message gone. There's one thing we need to do next and that is to restart the web service. So to do that, you wanna do service, PVE, 
proxy restart hit enter and that's going to restart the web service now in some cases you will need to delete your browser cache in order for that to work so back over here in the browser window we're just going to go in to proxmox again and let's try and log in and voila the error message should be gone so the next thing I do in Proxmox is to get it set up ready for updates. What we want to do is we want to remove the enterprise subscription updates because we don't have that and we're going to add the free options. It's going to come into PVE, you're going to go down to repositories, you will see these enterprise subscriptions. What you're going to do is you're going to click on that one, you're going to click on disable. Then you're going to go up to this one, you're going to hit disable. And then we're going to add the two free subscriptions. So click on add, you want to go down, you want to hit the no subscription. Uh, that one then you want to hit add again you're going to go down again and add this Seth squid no subscription hit add and that should be it once you've done that the next thing you can do is to actually apply all of the updates so you're going to click up again go on the updates you're going to hit on refresh that should go out and pull down all of the data packages and stuff that you need then once you've done that all you have to do is hit on upgrade once you hit upgrade it's going to open up a pop-up window and it's going to go through a whole pile of upgrades then it will reboot and it should bring you back to the login page so the server has restarted it has done all of the updates i've logged back into proxmox the next thing i do is i look at storage so this particular pc that i've installed proxmox on has two discs it has one disc that i use as the proxmox install disc it's a 500 gig ssd then i have a second three terabyte storage disc and that's where i'm going to store all of my containers and my vms now i want to set that up so if i go into pve and i go down into discs you can see the two discs that I have installed. Discs and storage within Proxmox could be an entire video, so I'm going to show you exactly what I do. If you have a single disc, all I do is I come over here into discs, I'm going to wipe this disc. Yes, that's going to delete everything that's on that disc. Now that that is wiped, I can come down here to directory. I'm going to create directory. I'm going to select that disc that I've just wiped. I'm going to set the file system for this as ext4, and I'm going to call this data drive and hit create and that is going to create that storage data drive for me so then i can install and build vms containers and store everything on that three terabyte drive next thing we want to do is we want to add storage so if you have a nas or an external storage device on your home network and you want to get that connected into proxmox maybe that's where you store all of your isos and things like that then this is how you do that all you have to do is come over here to data center you're going to go down into storage you're going to click on add you're going to go down to this SMB CIFS. Now I'm going to enter the details of my NAS. So give it a name. Enter the IP address of your NAS. You want to enter the username and password. Once you do that, you should see the folders that you have available on your NAS. So just click the one that you want. And if you have additional folders and things on that NAS, this is where you can add the path. In terms of content, this is the type of content that you want to store on that. So this is where you can say you want different things. So I like to have disk image. I like to have ISOs. I can select other things that I want to store on that NAS. So you could easily select like backups. You could do container templates, whatever you want. Select them here and then just click on add. Once that's done, you will see this NAS available here. So while you're in this location, this is where you can select the types of content that you want to store in each of these drives. For example, in my data drive, I have selected everything, all of the different items that I want to store on that drive. Now, if you've got multiple different drives, you might want to use one for ISOs, you might want to use one for containers and one for storage. And this is how you can make those modifications. Easily just come in here, click on edit and go down to each of these and select the content that you want to store in each of those drives. So before we talk about containers and VMs and backups and stuff, let's SSH to the server and install some useful utilities and tools and stuff. They're just useful to have installed if you ever want to go troubleshooting. So back in the SSH screen, we're going to go to apt, install, let's install htop, we'll do ftop, we'll do ncpu, smart mon tools, we will go lm sensors, um dash y and that should go and install those tools let's set up our sensors to detect so it's always good to have those tools installed and ready because you never really know when you're going to actually need them 
So now we've installed all those different tools, let's build our very first container. I'm going to show you a website called Proxmox Hyperscripts. This is really, really good and it will make your life so much easier. So on this website, I'm going to create this test Ubuntu LXC container. So all you do is come in here, you want to find the container that you want and you want to copy the code at the bottom. So you want to copy that. You want to go back over into Proxmox and you're going to open up the shell window. So once you've done that, that should pop up on your screen. So you want to paste that in. So you want to paste that, you're going to hit enter and that's going to bring up the install message. So click on yes and just run through that configuration. So that will pretty much create the entire container for you. You might have some options that you have to choose. For example, it's going to ask you where you want to store the container. So I'm going to select that. So once that has finished the install, come up here and you'll see the container that has been created and that is available now on the left hand side. So now we have a container configured. Let's talk about backups. Backups are really easy to configure. You just have to come up to data center. You want to go down to backup and then you want to click on add. This is where you can choose to set up your backup schedule and you can on sort of what VMs and containers you want to include in that backup. So if you look down through this, it's going to give us these options. We can choose where we want to do the backup. If you have a NAS, you can use that as a destination for your backup. If you have a local data drive, you can use that. It's really, really easy. Just come down here. You want to hit on the schedule. I'm going to set this up for maybe every Sunday at 1 a.m. I'm going to include this container. I'm going to say backup to NAS every Sunday. I can choose the type of compression, the, the mode for the backup. I can choose other things like notifications, retention. I can add some notes in here. Once you've decided what you want, all you have to do is click on create. That is going to create that backup schedule in here and anytime you can come in and edit and remove or you can even just run the job now. If you want to do a very simple backup of a single instance like a VM or a container, go directly into the container itself. You want to go down to backup and from here you can click on backup now. Once you've done that, it's going to show this screen where you can choose again your storage location, the mode, the compression and all you have to do is click on backup and that's going to back up directly to that location. So now we've talked about backups, let's talk about restores. If you have had like a Proxmox installed before and you've had backups up and going, for example, I've had an old Proxmox server where I backed up some containers to my NAS. If I wanted to restore those containers back to this new Proxmox server, all I have to do is come up here and hit on server view. I'm going to drop that down into folder view. I'm going to go down here to storage. I'm going to select the location of where that, that backup is, so it's on my NAS. If I click in here, you will see I created an audio bookshelf container on an old server. So if I wanted to restore that, I just click on that and click on restore and that will restore that to my new Proxmox server. The last thing I want to talk to you is about networking on these Proxmox servers. It all depends on your home network and how many ports you have available on your lab server. As I said, this one has a single network interface. So what I'm going to do is I want to go in there and take a look at the network settings. One thing I always do is I create a dedicated network switch. If you've seen any of my other videos like the Ultimate Cybersecurity Project, you will see that I build a dedicated firewall on my Proxmox server and I have lots of various workloads and networks behind that firewall and it's very easy to do. So on this Proxmox server I'm going to go into network and in here you will see this VMBR0 so that is the default network switch. That's the switch that's connected to your home network. If you want to create a private network just come up here click on create go down to Linux bridge you can, it's going to automatically select the next name that's available. I'm going to give this a completely different range. So 10.10.100.0. I'm going to do this a comma. I'm going to say um, private network. If I want this network to be VLAN aware, and what that means that if I am to assign this particular network switch to like a firewall and I want to configure multiple VLANs on that firewall, that's when I would click on this VLAN aware. So if you do that, just click on this tick box and then just click on create. Once you've done that, you need to hit apply configuration, hit yes. That's going to reload the network stack on this server. So there you go, that is how you get Proxmox installed and that is 11 things that I do right after installing Proxmox. If you do other things that I didn't mention in this video, then please let me know. Drop them in the comment box below. So thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it helpful. Remember to like and subscribe because it helps me grow this channel. Thanks again and I will see you in the next one.